Hello friends, Tal the Tank here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my updated impressions and kind of a look at the Guardian Druid in its current incarnation in the Legion Alpha. Now this is being recorded April 16th, Saturday of 2016. So if there's a new build or anything, if this is outdated, please note that things are changing constantly in the Legion Alpha, so things I say here may be a little bit different in even a week. Uh, so first, before I go ahead and talk about this, I want to go ahead and give a little background information about who I am, why I feel like I uh, have a good opinion to give, and why I think maybe my opinion can carry even a tiny little ounce, you know, salt of weight. Um, so I am a tank in intent on Thrall. Uh, I'm a 13 on 13 mythic tank. I've been tanking the entire expansion, um, and I'm going to be making a lot of tank videos here in the Legion Alpha as well as when Legion actually launches including encounter guides, class guides, things of that nature. So I will say historically Guardian Druid has not been my favorite tank. Um, I don't enjoy rage in general but on top of that I've always felt that the bear is, is a bit of a, a relic of the past. A lot of the things haven't changed well, they haven't moved well into the new age of tanking especially with active mitigation uh, and in fact they were actually very difficult to reliably use in WAD and right up until HFC when they received a couple of uh, much needed buffs uh, to make them better. That being said, a lot of people love their bear druids. I'm going to again just say I've never been a fan, I've never been super great at it, uh, but I'm going to try to take a very analytical approach to this and um, see how it's going to be. So basically, the bear has changed um, dramatically and it is even potentially the best tank as it stands right now. Uh, they're very, very strong. They have a lot of damage reduction. Uh, they have a lot of cooldowns that they can use in a variety of situations. I feel like a bear has almost has an answer to everything, uh, as well as having just the ability to take more damage and receive more healing than any other tank. And I'll go ahead and explain that in a little bit. Um, as far as how it changed from WAD, in WAD, it felt like you were constantly spammed with rage. Um, to an almost overfilling point to the point where if you weren't using your you know before the 20 percent damage reduction on your um i believe it was i don't think i don't think it was survival instincts it was something else i can't think of it for the life of me but it was the the dodge you used to have two active mitigation buttons one that healed you and one that was a dodge and then they added a 20 percent damage reduction to it um you, there was a lot of times when you felt like you were just wasting your rage you either use the dodge for the 20% damage reduction because the dodge is unreliable or you just spammed Maul except Maul had a cooldown so you can't really get rid of all your rage and then you just use the heal because why not but then it gets wasted it was honestly something that was very unattractive to me but that has changed uh, again dramatic change um, that 20% dodge thing they've moved away from that dodge play style of the bear druid which is fantastic they gave it a little bit to, to brewmasters that sucks I love brewmaster uh, but oh well Bears weren't meant to be dodging and weaving all over the place, so they went ahead and gave them a new mastery, which I think is pretty cool. Now their new mastery is Nature's Guardian. It increases your maximum health and your healing received, and with all tank masteries, it increases your attack power. What does this mean? Bears will probably have the most health out of every tank going into Legion. They will be taking more damage than other people because they're meant to absorb and soak healing. They just flat out increase the amount of healing that your your healers do, um, to the point that I believe even if you were you know trying to cheese ranks and you know make healers do stupid healing and all that, um, having a guardian druid or even two guardian druids will increase their healing artificially because they'll be healing more when they heal you, uh, unless it shows up in logs or something as a nature's guardian just for the heal for the druid himself if that shows up under his logs or, or anything like that. But that, that doesn't matter. I'm just going off on a tangent now. Um, so crit is just increasing the attacks and attacks and heals the effectiveness of them. Haste is going to reduce a couple of abilities here. Uh, mastery is still going to be very powerful. Versatility doing as it always does. Uh, and besides that, they just kind of moved away from that dodge mentality. Um, what they've done is... Let's open our spell book here so we can start taking a look at the spells. Uh, first of all, your artifact is going to be your artifact ability is going to be Rage of the Sleeper. This is a 1.5 minute cooldown and it unleashes the Rage of Ursoc for 20 seconds, preventing obviously not that much percent of damage, but preventing a percent of damage you take, and it reflects it back at your attackers. 
it's very interesting. Um, obviously, it's not going to, you know, it, if it does reflect a full, like a, let's say 10%. If it reflects 10% of an ability, but it's an ability that would, like, destroy you or kill you, I don't think it'll activate. Um, it'll probably just flat out kill you. I, I don't think you'll be seeing bears just like two shotting bosses or anything like that but who knows um there is an artifact trait that's going to make that just be possibly the strongest cooldown in the game uh but we'll get into that in a little bit general bear spells you still have your bark skin um that's actually going to damn i shouldn't have taken talents um so bark skin if you take guardian of a loon bark skin is a 1.5 minute cooldown it's reducing the damage you take preventing spell casting delays it lasts about 13.5 seconds um, you can use it in all forms all that kind of stuff and while we're on it let me go ahead and take a look at survival instincts where is it where is it survival instincts reduces all damage you take by 60 percent for six seconds it has two charges it's on a four minute recharge but with that talent you're actually able to reduce the cooldown a little bit but we'll get into that in a little bit you still have grawl growl your bear form still gives you an increased armor and stamina it also protects you from polymorph increases your threat you can still you still have access to healing touch baseline you cannot cast it as a bear and i believe dream scenarius was the ability that would let you get a free one uh a, a proc chance i think i believe that's gone um it's not in the talents anymore so that mechanic is gone you still have access to cat form although as you should know Druids have this new talent tier at 45 that gives you an affinity. If you do not choose, for example, Restoration Affinity, you do not have things like uh, Regrowth, Rejuvenation, Swift Mend. If you don't choose the Cat, you don't have uh, Shred, Rip, Ferocious Bite. You have access to Swipe still as a bear. And if you don't choose Balance, you do not have Star Surge, Illusion Strike, Solar Wrath, Sunfire. But we will talk more in depth about that when we get to the talents. Uh, so Healing Touch is the only heal you have available to you that's traditional to cast. You have Incapacitating Aura, which is, in my opinion, just useless, completely useless. I hate that ability. I wish they would give him something more useful. You have Dash again. When we first did our Artifact Quest, we did not have Dash available to us. It's been given back. Still puts you in cat form. Still very sad. But, shit, at least you have a sprint. Just don't use it while tanking because you will get fucked. Iron Fur is your new active mitigation. It is on a... One second cooldown, which basically means spamble as long as you have the 45 rage. It increases your armor by a, by a certain percentage uh, for 7.5 seconds, and you can overlap it. So what does that mean? You keep using it. It keeps stacking the the, the armor, but within the 7.5 seconds. So you use it once, 7.5 seconds. Let's say you use it when it's at 5 seconds. For 5 seconds, you have the double, and then when it gets to the end, you have 2.5 seconds of your second iron fur. It's just going to have the normal amount of armor. Pretty cool. Armor, of course, is going to be giving you... Let's see if I can find it in here, if it's even in here anymore. It should be in defense. Armor is just reducing base physical damage taken. Uh, it's really good just for, you know, auto attacks and, and just basically physical damage. You still have access to entangling runes. You have Mangle on a cooldown that's reduced by haste. Does damage, deals 20% additional damage against bleeding targets. It gives you 6 rage. Frenzied regeneration, still here, but has but is different than its Wad incarnation. It does 10 rage. Haste reducing cooldown, it has two charges, and it heals you for 40% of all damage taken in the last 5 seconds over 6 seconds. Minimum 5% of maximum health. This is very sim similar to the old Death Strike where, you know, you certain amount of damage in a certain amount of time, and it will heal you for that. Um, I don't like this spell. I can see uses for it. Obviously, if you just, if you take a massive hit and you're, you know... You had a big, nice, full green HP bar, and now you don't. You have it at like 75%, you have it at 50%. It's a good time to use it. You'll be healing for a bunch. Um, the problem I find with it, at least when I was doing my testing, was it heals you, yes, but it's not something that you can use to just keep yourself alive. Make no mistake, this is not like Demon Hunter. This is not like Blood DK. As a bear druid, you have a lot of damage reduction and you have some healing, but you're not going to completely heal yourself back up to full. Unless you use Rage of the Sleeper, but again, that's an artifact trait and it makes a little OP. Um, so Frenzied Regeneration, it will help keep you up, especially if you use it intelligently, but it's not going to sustain you by yourself the entire time. Still, cost 10 Rage, interesting, gives you some healing. It's another way of using your Rage. Your other active mitigation for Rage is Mark of Ursal, 45 Rage, just like Iron Fur, and reduces magical damage you take by 30% for the same amount of time as Iron Fur. There's your trade-off. You either use Marco Versal for magic or Iron Fur for physical. That's really cool. It's really boring, but it's cool because it 
what I care about and what I try to stress in these videos is um, we want interesting mechanics, we want interesting gameplay, all that, but we also want tools for every situation. You don't want to be the, the tank that can't handle a lot of magical damage. You know, if we ever get a, Le a Li Shi from Mop again, which God forbid we ever do that, but if we ever get that again, you'll have some magic damage reduction. On top of being the tank with like the most health and the most healing in incoming, um, you'll have some magic, redem uh, magic dam damage reduction. Sorry. I feel like I've been talking really fast in all these videos and I get out of breath, so I'm trying to keep that under control a little bit more. Uh, but essentially, it is giving you that tool for that magic damage in any sort of fight. And you don't have to talent into it, you don't have to worry about it. It's the same amount of rage as your physical damage reduction. So you want to use these two preemptively and this to heal something back up after. This is reactionary, these are two are preventive. Then you have Maul. It's still going to cost rage. It's going to be on a abysmal little cooldown that is absolutely the bane of my existence. I don't understand why Maul can't just be Heroic Strike. Just let it be off the global cooldown. No cooldown. You need to get rid of your rage. You don't want to cap. I don't like seeing my rage cap. And you can always make the argument that, yeah, you could just use Iron Fur. But what if I don't need to use Iron Fur? What if I don't need to use that? I can just spam Maul 20 times and kill some ad because the boss is in the air casting whatever the fuck. I don't know. I don't like it, but it's still there. Regrowth, like I said, is only available through the Affinity, so it's Rejuvenation, so I won't talk about those. Mighty Bash is a talent. Lunar. Okay, so Moonfire. You get Moonfire baseline as a bear, and it's... Just as a normal, just normal loon fire, it's a dot, just as, just does damage. Uh, but essentially, what I found is you basically end up using this as your single target, you know, in between things, spam. Just spam it. Single target, you use it when your mangle and your, what's this called, thrash are off cooldown. I'll talk about thrash right now. Uh, but you just use it when it's off cooldown. When those two abilities are on cooldown. Uh, it's a single target spam, very similar to swipe. It's your AoE spam. Uh, it's pretty cool. Remove Corruption still here, Prawl still here, Revive, Pulverize, Talent, Skull Bash, you still Interrupt, and Little Dash. I don't like using this to, you know, charge something, but it does have that functionality. I like saving my Interrupt for important things, but still there. Rebirth still there, uh, Stampeding Roar is still there, 2 minute cooldown, yep, yeah, because I didn't take that Talent. 2 minute cooldown, still giving everyone a bunch of uh, speed here. I do want to mention that again, all hybrids got their uh, their res back before only healers had it. It's kind of annoying. Survival instincts is your big cooldown. It reduces damage you take by 60% for six seconds. Two charges. Remember, it is normally a four minute with the talent. It's two minutes. Um, it has two charges, and curious and curiously enough, it counts as active mitigation. So you have multiple spells that count as active mitigation. And as a brewmaster who has to do things like, I don't know, manner off, when I have one act, one button that'll count as active mitigation and it's on a random chance to get, of course, that's not the same now because in Legion, it's you know you don't even have a Lucid Brew anymore. But just the fact that they seem to get all these different buttons that count as active mitigation, I hope it doesn't get into a situation where one class is like, oh yeah, I have to hold on to this one button for extended amounts of time because I need it for this specific ability, while bears can just lol 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 all over the place. Kind of annoying, but it's a minor thing. Um, then you have Gore as a passive, which means Thrash, Swipe, and Moonfire each have a 20% chance to reset the cooldown on Mango and cause it to generate additional rage. Again, Single target spam filler is Moonfire. Multi target spam filler is Swipe, which is still here. You could just spam it as much as you want, does a bunch of damage to things around you. Uh, that being said, now that I look at it, it does look like it might be doing more damage than Moonfire. So, I mean, it does a lot in the dot, so maybe you'll want to use Moonfire once and then spam Swipe every once, every other time. Um, that's going to be down to the math and the tuning, all that kind of stuff. Of course, you still have your mastery right there. You can teleport to Moonglade, but that changes to think teleport to the dream, dream walkway thing that druids get. Thick hide is a passive, reduces all damage you take by 10%. And then you have Thrash. Thrash looks fucking awesome. I'm going to show you that right now. Look at that. It's an orange squirrel of death. It's on a cooldown that's reduced by haste. It just AoEs everything around you, does bleed damage, adds a crazy big bleed, 
and it can stack up to three times. It also generates you for rage. This is what you're going to be using rotationally. Uh, so you have a lot of AOE if you notice here. You're going to be using Mangle and Thrash on cooldown to get rage as well as stack up the Thrash Bleed, um, which you're going to be able to use with Pulverize or just leave on mobs. So then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the talents. Now the first tier you have brambles, it's basically thorns, it reflects up to a certain amount of damage that, you've, that you receive from every attack and then reflects it back. Uh, I guess it's good for AoE but it's really boring. I don't, I mean, it's really just for damage, maybe it'll be more damage reduction than 50% damage reduction, but I'm, gonna, I'm not a math guy, but no, I'm pretty sure Pulverize or even Blood Frenzy is going to be better. Now, Blood Frenzy, Thrash generates 2 Rage each time it deals damage over time while at 3 stacks. So this is only in effect when your Thrash has 3 stacks applied. This has a 5.5 second cooldown with, you know, just a little bit of haste that I get off this PvP gear. But, to me, the problem with Blood Frenzy is, yes, eventually you'll get it stacked up and you'll be getting a bunch of range. Especially if you somehow, if you're doing like council fights or, you know, two target fights that last a long time, it'll give you a lot of rage. But it's hard to argue with Pulverize. Pulverize does the same thing it does now. It does a bunch of damage, but it consumes two stacks, not three, two stacks of thrash on the target. Roosters all damage you take by 15%. It's really good. It just is. I mean, you can either have it up all the time, or if you just want to save it up for a specific moment. The really cool thing that I noticed about this, especially in dungeons, is you're using thrash, you're fighting multiple things, there's a bunch of targets around you. You can... What the hell is screaming? Okay, I'm sorry about that. I have no idea what's screaming in the background, but um, if you have multiple targets or a little AoE pack or in dungeon, you can stack up Thrash to 2 on every single one, and then you can just tab target spam Pulverize. And you're doing a bunch of damage to every single target, but at the same time, you're stacking a longer and longer and longer Pulverize that just, you know, I had it up to like a minute once. It's really cool. Um, that's, you know, it's just, it's, it's a good thing to have. 15% damage reduction for everything. It's fantastic. I don't see why you wouldn't choose this unless math makes this amazing, but this will probably never be amazing. Then you have Guttural ro Roars, which increases the radius of Stampeding Roar and Incapacitating Roar by 200%, reduces the cooldown of Stampeding Roar. Depending on the fight, you'll have to take this if Stampeding Roar is very essential. Um, Displacer Beast still makes you cat form and it's a blink. Probably don't take it. Uh, Wild Charge is still going to be your charge that you have to tell it into because fuck you, you're a bear. Um, I took this while I was leveling um, when I was doing some dungeon content. This will be, depending on the encounter, this will probably be every other time. Then the affinity row. This is one of those things that makes me think druids are going to have a very prominent role when it comes to tanking in Legion. If there's ever a fight where you don't have to tank all the time, if there's ever a fight where you're not constantly having to take care of something, you can go balance and be a ranged DPS. Not, not the best, but more damage than you are as a tank. You can be a melee DPS, not the best, but more damage than you are as a tank. Or you could take Restoration Affinity, and you can throw out some heals. Again, not as good as a healer, but still, you can throw heals out. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy if you think about that. Most of the time, you're probably going to be taking one of these two for damage, and this one when you're just tanking. Ysera's Gift is a passive that you get for Restoration. It just heals you for 3% of your max health every 5 seconds or heals another friendly. If you're going to be saying tank the entire time, you want this. Feral Affinity increases your move speed by 15%. Awesome. And then just gives you some cat abilities. And then Balance increases the range of your abilities by 5 yards. Situationally awesome. And then gives you access to the range stuff. Um, I honestly think that Especially on the pool, you'll be able to be a cat or a, or a boomkin, do a bunch of damage on the pool, be able to switch out whenever you want to. I think it actually puts moonkin form on cooldown if you take this, uh, if you use moonkin form. Uh, but it's, it's really, really cool. It gives you that ability to do more as you tank. The next row is Mighty Bash, same as now, Mass Entanglement Typhoon, all that same as now. It's just push back, root things, stun things. The next tier you have Soul of the Forest, Mangle generates 5 Rage, deals 15% more damage, Incarnation Guardian of Ursoc, as it is, just 3 minute cooldown, reduces the cooldown on all melee abilities, which would be Thrash, Mangle, uh, Maul, yeah, that should be it, 
and it's just going to let it mango hit up the three targets uh, and then Galactic Guardian which damage has a 5% chance to trigger a free automatic moonfire at the target when this occurs the next moonfire you cast generates 15 rage so what I see from this is it's basically how do you like your rage generation do you want it as a big cooldown that lets you just spam all your abilities uh, giving you a bunch of rage for more iron furs more heal more not more healing because that's a cooldown more iron furs more damage magic damage reduction uh, or more just damage in general do you want to passively generate more rage every time you do mango do a little more damage or do you want a proc that has a good chance of giving you a decent amount of rage on demand what I like about Galactic Guardian is it is a nice on-demand amount all of your damage has a chance to trigger a free automatic moonfire and the truth of the matter is if you're tanking multiple targets they all have bleed damage every single tick of that bleed has a five percent chance this is going to be probably your go-to aoe talent you just have to make sure that you pay attention uh for either the proc or to notice if a moonfire randomly goes off so you can so you can make sure this also lights up but just so you can make sure that you use it when you have the proc up and this will probably be more of a single target uh just consistent sort of thing that you want to take. Now in the next tier you have Earth Warden. Every six seconds you gain a charge Earth Warden reducing the damage of the next auto attack you take by 30%. You're gonna have up to three charges. Um, it's gonna be up to the math guys whether that's great or not. It may be slow hitting bosses that do a lot of auto attack damage. It's gonna be good. Uh, it's not particularly exciting or cool really. It even has the same icon as Soul of the Forest. It's kind of boring. Guardian of Elune, Mangle increases the duration of your next Iron Fur or Microversal by 2 seconds, or the healing of your next Frenzied Regeneration by 20%. So, Mangle is on a haste reducing cooldown, but in general it's about 5 seconds. Um, I like that because it just lets you, it's something that you'll have to get into your head where you use Mangle and you have to remember, okay, so Iron Fur, Mark Reversal, or Frenzied Regeneration, whichever of those they use, it's going to be a little bit longer. Maybe you need a certain amount of magic damage uh, taken, reduced, for like an ability. Like let's say Zul Harak, his green ad is spamming his... Um, just increasing green fire damage thing and hey if you take this talent your mark reversal one use will just cover that entire thing you're good to go you know it's something to think about um i like this it's it's going to come down to math whether you're going to use survival of the fittest which reduces the cooldown of bark skin and survival instance by 50 percent i mean having access to bark skin more often is obviously amazing because it's a nice 20 percent damage reduction uh, it's completely free. Just use it. And survival instincts is your big shield wall. You know, two minute recharge on that is way better than four minutes. But maybe you don't need that all the time. Maybe on an encounter when you're fighting, when you're actually fighting the boss, actually tanking, you don't need to be using your cooldown that long, that often. So maybe you'll take Guardian of Loon for more um, overall damage reduction versus very important moments damage reduction and this again is very much into that whole auto attack damage reduction maybe the actual spells or the things they don't hit that hard you just want some basic attack auto attack damage uh, reduction so i mean it'll probably i believe it'll come between guardian of a lunar survival of the fittest but it's going to depend on the encounter or the math guys then last year you have ren and tear thrash also increases your damage dealt to the target and reduces your damage taken from the target by two percent per application of thrash this is cool but Pulverize does kind of, you know, eke into that because it is going to be taking two stacks of your Thrash. So if you use Pulverize on cooldown, maybe Rend and Tear isn't a good thing to do. Although if you're tanking multiple things, everything will be reducing the damage. You'll be doing more damage to things. Maybe it'll let you choose when you want to pull that off for more damage reduction versus having it up for, for more damage done. It'll depend. Lunar Beam is really cool. I don't think the tuning is quite right right now. But essentially, it just spawns a little lunar thing under you for uh, healing and damage, more healing to you over a certain amount of time uh, than the damage that it deals. But I mean, like I said, Frenzied Regeneration can heal you not a lot unless it's very specific circumstances. This might be nice if you just want a nice little heal every one and a half cool minutes. And then you have Bristling Fur, which I don't really like, but maybe it'll be good at some points. It's a 40 second cooldown. All attacks against you generate rage for 8 seconds. I mean, unless I'm mistaken, you, when you take damage, you get rage anyways. So, I don't, I don't know. Cool, I guess. Probably going to be between Lunar Beam and Ren and Tear. 
Um, I like both of these. Uh, I like the having the choice between Pulverize and Ren and Tear of when you want to do more damage, when you need more damage uh, reduction, and at minimum you'll have one stack, so you'll always be doing at least uh, 2%. Uh, 2% less and 2% more, which is admittedly small, and in the grand scheme of things, 6% more uh, damage versus 6% less damage taken. Both of those are so small and minuscule, it's you know almost not important. But lastly, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the artifact. Now, you have the Claws of Ursoc. We've already talked about Rage of the Sleeper. It's a really cool cooldown that gets increased. Uh, as far as all the minor talents you have, uh, well, no, let's just go down this. So, one of your majors is Gory Fur. Mango has a chance to reduce the rage cost of your next Iron Fur or Mark of Ursoc by 50%. Basically, you're going to want to go ahead and put up a weak aura, letting you know when your next Iron Fur or Mark is going to be less rage. Uh, be really cool, it'll let you get a lot more iron first rolling, especially if you get some good RNG. And again, Mangle is something you're using constantly. Uh, this increases the crit strike chance of maul, this increases the healing by frenzied regeneration, increases armor, increases bleed damage you deal, uh, thrash reduces movement speed of its targets by 50%. This has been in contention because people, and I can see, I can understand this, um, you don't want to always be reducing you know the move speed of things especially outside of your control you use thrash on cooldown there's no argument there there's no discussion you use it on cooldown slowing everything all the time is probably not the best as a brewmaster trust me i know this um maybe you just don't pick that up but it's going to depend uh the other thing is just increasing your armor the roar of the crowd stampeding roar increases move speed by an additional five percent per ally hit up to a maximum of 25 percent that's pretty crazy. It already increases your move speed by 60%, so that would be, if it's additive, 85%. Holy shit, what could you possibly need to run out of for that? But there is that one boss in the Night... I think it's the Night Hold. It's the Raid of Gul'dan in it. That's basically a gigantic room with something in the middle, and you're running around the outside of it. So that could be really cool for that. Something to keep in mind. And Stampede Roar, again, is just two-minute cooldown, and it can't be reduced. So... Who knows? Then you have uh, increasing your stamina. It increases the duration of Barks in Savage Defense Iron for Mark of Ursol by 1.5 seconds. It's really small amount of time, but I mean, more time is more time. Then you have increases the damage dealt of Mangle. Uh, survival Instance reduces all damage you take by an additional 10%. Reduces the cooldown of Barkskin by 10 seconds. I'm not actually sure that that's working currently, but still even more Barkskin. That's 35 second cooldown. Um, and Survival Instance reducing it by, I believe it's usually 50. This will be 60 with that, unless that's not working. Then you have Bear Hug. Increases the chance to trigger Gore, which Gore, remember, is Moonfire, Thrash, and Swipe have a chance to make you... Uh, activate Mangle for you and have more uh, Rage Regen, which it already does more than Thrash at the 6. Uh, and then you have Embrace of the Nightmare. While Rage of the Sleeper is active, you deal 33% increased damage, gain 33% increased leech, which again is damage goes to healing, and are immune to all effects that cause loss of control of your character. Holy fucking shit. You could take out the rest of this goddamn tree and just have that, and that would still be better. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's going to make this cooldown not only a DPS cooldown, a healing cooldown, you know, a survivability cooldown. You're reflecting, you're reflecting damage. You're dealing more damage. You're healing for a bunch of damage. That's ridiculous. Then you have Adaptive Fur, which just taking elemental damage has a chance to grant you 10% reduction for 15 seconds against that element. This is not something you'll have to ever worry about. But it's kind of cool to know that you'll be taking even more damage reduction, which, again, is the main point of the bear. You're just taking less damage all the time, constantly. Um, overall, I think that there's a lot of interesting interactions here. I mean, everything's reducing your damage. I feel, I feel like the druid is going to be a very, very safe bet, which is kind of what they are now. I mean, they're not... They've always had the ability to go uh, heart of the wild and just kind of like go ham on something for a couple of seconds, do a lot of damage, not all the time. Like, they can't just, you know, they're not a Paladin or a Blood DK currently that just is able to choose when they want to do a bunch of damage, whenever they want to do it. They'll have to be very selective with it, um, especially, especially, sorry, especially right now in WAD where they only get the Heart of the Wild buff once and then it's like, okay, now the rest of the fight you're just doing normal stuff. Um, but what I like about it is 
it's very strong and consistent. There's constant damage reduction in Barkskin, Rage of the Sleeper, there's Survival Instincts that has multiple charges, you can heal, you just have, you know, a bunch of armor increase that'll stack, you have da magic damage reduction, you have Pulverize for more damage reduction, you have Rend and Tear for more damage reduction, you know, there's all these different things that just will make you a tanky son of a bitch. That's just the truth. As far as how it plays, I'm still not crazy about it. Um, I always have a little bit of an awkward time playing this stuff on the on the alpha, anyways, just because I don't have access to weak aura, so it's I'm a little, you know, a little more rusty with certain things. Um, but I mean, it it feels a lot better than any other incarnation of the druid I've played before. I feel like I have an answer for every situation besides healing myself back up, you know, which. There's an argument to be made that a tank shouldn't be able to just, you know, 10% health to 100% health. I like doing it because I like being OP, but obviously that's, you know, obvious. Um, but I feel like you have all the tools to make your make your healer's life easier, to protect yourself, to make it easy for them to heal you up, especially with the increased healing that they do directly to you. You just take more healing. You amplify their healing when it gets to you. Um, there's, there's a lot to like here. There's a lot to... To be able to think about the mechanics of an, of an encounter and how you can counter them with your abilities. Now, as far as talents go, I'm not super crazy impressed with a lot. For the very first tier, I just don't see anything other than Pulverize being useful. For the next tier, it's going to depend on you or the raid. 45 is the most interesting in my opinion because there's going to be moments where you want to you know switch to healing and throw out some quick heals on everyone or just have passive healing there's going to be moments when you want to be a melee or a range to deal with other things to just i think balance is just the more the most damage on a cooldown because i unless it's been changed and i'll test it right now uh, let me just go ahead and test it now okay so you go into moonkin form you're doing your stuff and then nope you can just go into moonkin as much as you want so that's you know, that's probably going to do more damage than Pharaoh, especially you have the ability to be ranged. But remember, you're a tank, so it'll be a little bit awkward for you to be in melee and then all of a sudden try to jump out to range. I think you'll probably still count for certain things. Um, you do have wild charge if you pick it up, though, so you can fly to behind someone or anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean... Let me actually check that. I want to make sure for you guys. So yeah, you can, you can bound backwards. Uh, and I can't do that yet. Oh, while well, I'm in combat. Okay, well, so th there'll be that little bit of awkwardness. So maybe you'll take Feral every once in a while, especially because you just get about a 15% move speed bonus, which is always important as a tank, having movement, uh, which is something that, just like the DKs, I'm a little annoyed about when it comes to the bear, just like the warrior even, even though they have Heroic Leap, thank god it's the one saving grace. I don't like charge and relying on having to target people and enemies to move around. Um, but I mean, then you have this tier, which is stupid, and then you have this tier, which... Uh, I mean, this tier has CC stuff. It's not stupid. It, it depends on the encounter, but it's nothing, nothing crazy. Um, the next tier, just about how you want to take more, more rage. I like Galactic Guardian personally. Uh, more than the other two because it's it changes your playstyle a little bit. So, oh, okay, now you have to use Moonfire. You know, you have to pay attention to it. Uh, I believe Guardian of Ursoc was at one point the preferred cooldown in WAD, but that, you know, has changed depending on the different encounters. Um, the 90 tier I find interesting because these two talents, uh, more than this one, is going to be very much a situation of do I need this for a specific tank, uh, for a specific boss ability? No, I want more overall damage reduction. And that'll be interesting. It'll be something you have to pay attention to. Maybe you won't be able to overwrite Mango if you use it twice in a row without using it up. You've just wasted a potential ability. Um, something to keep in mind. Then and I like this tier because you have the Lunar Beam that heals you and then the Ren and Tear. As far as choices when it comes to offensive for defensive i don't see that as much in the bear i feel like everything just comes and does more damage does more damage reduction um there's not really a choice here like maybe brambles overall does more damage than pulverize um but it's not as apparent where you can just you you're just straight up trade like for example the demon hunter when i did that video you know spirit bomb you are sacrificing a soul fragment 
but you are making potential for more soul fragments and doing damage at the same time. Yes, you don't get the heal, but maybe you don't need the heal. Maybe even though you're taking damage, your healer's got you, you can sacrifice a little bit at specific moments when an ad needs to die, when a boss is taking increased damage. You can shift your priorities as the encounter goes, which is what I love about tanking. There's a lot of boring stuff in tanking, but it's not always so static. You have choices. Um, and the only bad thing is, I think, as far as this entire talent tree goes, it really just comes down to your affinity. And that's going to be something that in the beginning of the fight, you either take this one because you need more healing or you take one of these two because you want to do damage random moments in the fight, which is cool, which I'm okay with. But that does mean that that one balance for, for damage reduction or defensive for offensive comes down to one choice here, which is a little sad face. Um, Rage of the Sleeper is going to be a, a monster of a cooldown. You're going to want to stack that with every fucking haste and all the crazy stuff. If the boss takes increased damage, use Rage of the Sleeper. You just munch on the boss. Um, but yeah, that's as far as that offense for defense, defense for awesome, offense thing, it really feels like it comes down to the affinity uh, and everything else just kind of together. Like, for example, Mangle does more rage, but it also does more damage. This is going to be free rage, but I mean, you're just firing off a Moonfire for free, so it's like free damage again. Um, you don't really have to choose between those different things, just how you want to do things differently. Uh, so, as far as the gameplay, I do want to show off the bear. Uh, so you're just auto attacks. This new skin that they have is really cool. Thrash is awesome. You use Mangle. You use Moonfire. You can just swipe whenever you want to. Thrash is off cooldown again. Mangle again. Iron Fur. You know, just swipe. Maul. Resets Mangle. You use Thrash, which is awesome. Pulverize. Rage of the Sleeper. Get a nice big bear. Uh, Thrash again. I love Thrash. Thrash looks so goddamn cool. Pulverize. Mangle. Thrash, Moonfire for free, Swipe for shits and giggles, Mangle, Thrash, you know, Iron for Mark Reversal, Frenzied Regeneration, we're gonna use them all, Pulverize, Thrash again, you gotta reset on Mangle, we're gonna Swipe, we're gonna Moonfire, Maul, Thrash, Mangle, let's fish for that Mangle reset, come on Mangle, come on, oh, we're gonna Thrash, we got the Mangle reset. I mean, that's, that's basically the playstyle. You definitely want to use Pulverize, um, keep it up constantly. Uh, you want to use your Thrall, your, your Thrash constantly, Mangle, try not to Cap Rage, use your Iron Fur because it can never be wasted because it stacks with itself. See that? Increased armor, 84. I mean, it definitely feels better than it has ever. And I think that with all the tools that you have available to you, you do have to keep in mind that this, if you're serious about main, mythic main tanking, which when you're doing mythic tanking with no gear, with no like crazy set bonuses all the time and everything, you have to keep in mind, you will be under geared and will be taking serious amounts of damage. And if you have all these different tools to protect yourself and keep you alive and just take more healing, druids are going to be really powerful. They just are. As far as... Uh, cool little tanking tools and you know the toys that you have available to you it really just does come down to your affinity and then um you can root stuff you can incapacitating roar stuff you can let's see where else you can you have battle res that's different that's important to know you can remove some corruption so uh mad curse effects curse of poison um you can stealth though you're probably never going to stealth you have stampeding roar which i believe most of the other druid specs lost. I think only Feral still has that as well. Um, but I mean, it is something to know. It's it's your affinity, and then stampeding roar. You can root stuff. This is probably going to be useless for the rest of you know the game. Um, so there's not too many different things. There's no you know a tank cooldown that you can throw in your code tank. There's no real raid cd it's it's going to be your affinity which is still a really really cool thing just to be able to change and do so much more damage um whenever you want just every single time like i'm not tanking i just pop into moon conform and start spamming stuff which if i had everything set up let me just go ahead and do that just so i can show that off um where's this lunar strike Moonfire for the ladies solar wrath where is my star search? Sunfire. I 
believe that should be everything. Yeah. Just the fact that you'll be able to switch to this whenever you want to. Put up your dots. Just star surge. You know, you don't get all the really cool, you know, balance through it things, but you can keep your dots up if you need to. Um, they, there's not going to really be any sort of interaction uh, between your, your different things. It's just going to be if you want to do single target damage, you're going to want to uh, go ahead and use star surge and then use your empowerments. Uh, not having to worry about astral power, not having to worry about other things like that. This you have multi-dotting, but for the most part, single target damage, you're going to want to use star search on cooldown and then just spam these two until the empowerments are done. Um, it's that kind of stuff that I, I like. I like having those tools to just to just be able to respond to situations. Um, but as far as tanking goes, not really. Not too, not too many tools. Just, you know movement speed for the entire raid uh, but besides that staying alive you just have your base stuff no other extra little external toys and fun things like we've seen in some of the other specs overall i think this the guardian druid's in a fantastic position it is positioned currently as the top tank here on the alpha tuning still has to be done yes but they have tools for lots of different situations and just staying alive so in conclusion, I want to say it's something to keep your eye on. It's something to be aware of if you're serious about mythic raid tanking, if you're serious about dungeon tanking, challenge modes as you know more damage comes and goes and all that kind of stuff. They have they have spammable AOE, and their main ability does AOE and puts bleed. Like keep that in mind. Um, besides that, though, if you like this video, uh, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this. It really helps me out more than you could possibly imagine. It lets me do more things here, uh, and it makes me just feel good. Let's be for real. It makes me feel good or that people care enough to watch this and care enough that uh, think that they want to see more of this kind of stuff. Um, so with that being said, my name has been Tal. This has been my updated kind of view and impression on the Guardian Druid. It's current incarnation in the Alpha as of... Saturday, April 16th, 2016. Uh, so I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.